Hello, welcome back to our channel and uh, we continue our discussion on the noise, specifically noise in electronic systems. And in our previous module, we covered uh, what noise is, what its types are, and how influence uh, the noise makes, what kind of influence noise makes into your circuits and systems. So after that module, we again introduce one more module on the thermal noise. And now we have brought to you a new topic in the noise series, which is a one over F noise or also called as flicker noise. So F stands for frequency here. So this is another kind of noise that is uh, prominently observed in electronic circuits, components, and the systems. And we are going to analyze, understand what this noise is, how it affects the performance of your components, devices, uh, materials, and even chemical cells, we will see in a moment. And uh, so if you are new to our channel and you, you have missed the previous two modules on the noise, so we encourage you to refer back to those modules and then uh, come back again to understand this one. So we start now. So one over F noise or also called as flicker noise is basically a low frequency noise, as you can see. Here is the graphical representation of the noise, uh, different types of noise and uh, their spectral density, okay? Uh, it could be a voltage spectral density, current spectral density or current multiplied by voltage, which is power. So it could be power spectral density, which shows the relationship of the spectral components over the frequency spectrum. On the x-axis, you have a log scale of frequency and on the y-axis, you have a spectral density. As I mentioned, it could be a current voltage or power. Here is also the graph uh, that is showing only the flicker noise component, which is one over F noise and it's a low frequency noise. So here you see that the noise uh, uh, power or noise voltage or noise current decreases as the frequency increases. And there is a linear relationship between the frequency and the noise, uh, power, noise voltage or noise current. So coming back to this graph, so we see that this low frequency noise, which is called as flicker noise or one over F noise is decreasing linearly. And up to this point, which is called as a corner frequency or breakover frequency point or a division point, because this line indicates left to this line portion is a uh, area of the flicker noise or low frequency noise. And a right to this line is the area of a broadband noise, which is also called as white noise, or is also called as thermal noise. And remember, I, as I just mentioned, thermal noise has been covered in our previous module. So the spectral density here that is expressed and plotted is uh, expressed in the nanovolt per root hertz. So it's basically voltage spectral density. And uh, it is also expressed at EN. EN stands for the voltage and IN stands for the noise current. EN is noise voltage, IN is the noise current. And you see that the slope of this line is 3 dB per octave. And this curve is a uh, voltage spectral density or the current spectral density, which is given equal to K, which is a constant here. Uh, multiplied by square root of Fc, which is the corner frequency, and uh, multiplied by square root of 1 over F. Okay, so there are some facts about the flicker noise that we need to understand. This noise spans over many frequency, but it is often observed less than 100 hertz. So we can say that from this plot, if this 1 over F corner frequency is 100 hertz below this region is your area of the flicker noise, flicker noise or the one over F noise. 
and its power spectral density is inversely proportional to the frequency. Remember, when I say power spectral density is inversely proportional to the frequency, that means PSD is inversely proportional to 1 over F. However, here the plot says it is square root of 1 over F or square root of 1 over or simply 1 over square root of F. So that is when I say this relation, I am referring to the voltage spectral density or the current spectral density. But when I am referring to the power spectral density, this relation should be 1 over F. There won't be any square root. Remember that. Okay. So uh, on the other hand, as I just said, the white noise or the thermal noise remains constant. It's spectral density, whether it's a voltage, power, or current uh, spectral density is remaining constant as a function of frequency. Okay. So let me take you to the next slide where we would understand the origin of this particular noise, which is one over F noise or called as flicker noise. We will uh, see uh, how this noise is produced, what processes are responsible for its uh, uh, production. So flicker noise is also called as a pink noise and it's a kind of fluctuation. So for example, this is a schematic representation of a metal oxide and the semiconductor device that is a MOS transistor. You got the pins such as drain, gate and the source. You got the P-type body or substrate and you have heavily doped regions called as N plus region. So you got these PN junctions here, you got this PN junction and the area below the gate oxide is called the channel of your transistor. So when you have a sufficient applied bias between drain and source and you apply the gate so that the electric field gets applied across the uh, MOS transistors capacitor and the charge carriers from the subtract uh, substrate get attracted and they are deposited or accumulated beneath the channel region. So here is an N plus region, here is an N plus region and considering this is an N MOS transistor, so you got sufficient number of electrons in the channel which are the charge carriers and then you have applied electric field between drain and source. So there is a circuit, closed loop circuit between drain to source, current flows from drain to source. In other words, the electrons flow from source to the drain. And when there is a conduction happening, the conduction process is on. So there are some impurities uh, into the conductive channel that causes or uh, that gives rise uh, into the fluctuation in the form of a fluctuation uh, and that fluctuation is reflected when you measure an output current along with the signal current you also record that fluctuation in the form of a noise current so that is your flicker noise so this is in the case of a MOSFET another example of a BJT considering this is n-type material middle is the base p-type material and another is n-type material. So this is an NPN transistor. When you join the N to the p-type material at both the sides, you got this gray area, which is called the depletion regions. And you got the charge carriers in the emitter regions, which are plenty of electrons. You got the charge carriers into the collector regions, which are basically getting drifted or coming from emitter to the uh, collector region through the base and this is uh, this uh, current due to this type of uh, charge flow is called as drift current and uh, when there is uh, when there is a charge flow from emitter to the base and let's say uh, from base to the emitter uh, so that kind of charge flow causes a current that is called as diffusion current so what happens when you are 
charge carriers from the emitter area makes transition to the collector area, you get some charge carriers recombined with the opposite type of charge carrier. So for example, these black dots are electrons. They are making travel from emitter to the collector. And the base region, which is a P-type material, is the depleted of electrons, which is a plenty of holes here, indicated by these white dots. So these electrons, while traveling, they get some of them, maybe 5 to 10% get recombined with this uh, empty charge carriers, which is the holes. So that recombination process also gives rise to some fluctuation uh, in the form of a flicker noise. And that reflects when you measure and or test and characterize the output uh, current or voltage for that matter. Okay. So in other words, in the form of a circuit diagram, you see there is this BJT and uh, you need to operate this, uh, for example, as a small signal amplifier or as a switch or any other application, you need to provide the biasing to this transistor. So there are various bias types such as fixed bias type, collector to base bias and the voltage division bias. So we've covered all these techniques of biasing with BJT in our previous model. So we encourage again you to refer to those. So when you bias, you have the base terminal, base pin here, and there is a base current flowing inside the transistor as we just explained from this physics right here. So that kind of, this kind of interplay of the charges within the transistor is giving rise to the uh, flicker noise or one over F noise, which is a low frequency noise. And in case of a circuit diagram, we also say that because you use the biasing, that DC biasing, uh, so the bias current within the transistor, for example, the base current causes the generation of the flicker noise, okay? So this kind of uh, noise has been uh, observed in uh, different components uh, such as uh, resistors. Uh, there are semiconductor devices, uh, the 2D materials such as graphene, for example, and even chemical cells. This flicker noise is a commonly observed phenomena. So let us have understand about when this flicker noise is present in semiconductor devices, specifically transistors. From the graph, we want to understand where is this corner frequency. It means uh, this corner frequency is not exactly in the middle as shown here, uh, there is a half portion is taken by the white noise and the remaining half is taken by the uh, uh, flicker noise. It's not the case for all semiconductor devices. Rather, it depends on the type of transistor. For example, the MOSFET, we, we first want to know, as you can see, these are the discrete MOSFETs. We want to know that uh, when the flicker noise is present in the MOSFET, uh, because I, I, I just explained in the previous slide, uh, there is impurities in the channel of the MOSFET that gives rise to the flicker noise. And this kind of fluctuation, which is a flicker noise, uh, uh, causes the uh, change in the threshold voltage, which is a turn-on voltage of the MOSFET, that is responsible to affect the overall behavior of this MOSFET. So a MOSFET exhibit uh, notably very high corner frequency. So this corner frequency in the case of MOSFET is extending up to gigahertz range. Remember, we just said that the flicker noise is a low frequency noise. However, in the case of MOSFET, this corner frequency is one gigahertz. It means up to one gigahertz you can see the occurrence or the presence of this uh, MOSFET. In the case of a JFET, you can see that there is the gate pin here and uh, you got this uh, depletion region. Uh, this is a N-type material. This is a P-type material. So there is basically a P-N junction here. You got the three pins, drain, source, and the gate. So this is the cross-section of the JFET, junction field effect transistors. And this is your BJT. Uh, different forms are shown over here, even with the very, very small uh, part, uh, which is BJT. So in these kind of transistors, uh, you can observe the corner frequency is uh, typically around one kilohertz. So see, you see there are different devices and you'll have different uh, corner frequency. So 
if we compare the JFET and the BJT, uh, the JFETs uh, are observed to exhibit slightly higher corner frequency as compared to the BJT counterpart. So their corner frequency is up to several kilohertz, maybe 10 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz, 50 kilohertz, so on and so forth. So this makes them less suitable for application sensitive to flicker noise. So if you are building uh, electronic system instrumentation where you want to have the less dominance of the flicker noise. So since the JFET have a higher corner frequency up to let's say hundreds of kilohertz, you don't uh, want to use JFET, rather you will go for BJT or, uh, for that applications. Of course, the MOSFET here, their frequency, corner frequency is in the gigahertz range. So there is a possibility that you might not want to use the MOSFET for that also. How about uh, understanding the flicker noise in the passives, such as you got these thick film registers, you got these carbon composition registers. You see, these are the small SMD parts. Uh, these are the surface mount uh, components in the form of registers. This is a wire wound register also. So these components also exhibit and show the flicker noise effect in their behavior. So uh, wire wound register possess a lowest level of flicker noise among these all these components. So you want to use the uh, build an application where flicker noise dominance is not wanted you want to use the register, you go for the wire bond. That could be a recommendation. For example, you are building the RF circuit. Uh, for example, here is the schematic of the radio frequency amplifier. So having a one over F noise in this circuit can lead to increase in the noise figure and degrade the overall signal to noise ratio of this amplifier. So solution is to use the zero drift amplifier to get rid of, eliminate or minimize one over F noise. So our focus is not here to explain how we will reduce the flicker noise uh, in the RF amplifier. So we just want to note that uh, what flicker noise can do to this circuit and what could be the solution. So there are techniques uh, for eliminating the one over F noise. For example, this is the frequency spectra of a RF oscillator or uh, crystal oscillator, or let's say the MEMS oscillator. And this central frequency is called as the carrier. And this is the uh, dual side, double-sided, the power spectral density. The left side, it has left side and it has a right side. So we basically, if we take a look at only the half portion, that is the right side of this uh, uh, PSD of an oscillator, we can see that this is basically uh, called as uh, the spectral density of an oscillator, okay? And uh, here, uh, the techniques are used to eliminate the one over F noise, which is this portion right here, to use the phase lock loop and temperature compensation so that the uh, oscillator stability and accuracy can be restored. In case of a sensor, uh, you can use the AC excitation so that the uh, dominance of one over F noise can be minimized or eliminated altogether. So hope you like this uh, video. If you did so, click the like button, uh, put some comments as your opinion, what you thought about this video. Uh, you can share your thoughts, views, and uh, we encourage you to also share this video with others for a wider reach and uh, stay tuned for more engaging contents like this. And till then, wish you happy learning.